This is a brief video demonstration on my latest scripting endeavor. You guys have seen me do plenty of things, such as making turrets, making explosions, teleporting players, blah 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 blah. But I have made something incredible this time. It is a button that moves when you press it. And it stops being on fire. But wait, there's more! Let's go ahead and do what the prompt is telling us to do. We have found our vehicle. Let's go ahead and get inside. I wonder what will happen. Bada boom! We are teleported onto a racetrack and you have been involuntarily assigned to one. Now you must go! Fight for your life! So yes, what this track is... <laughs> what this script is, is um... This is uh... It's a racetrack! I don't know why I'm stumbling on it, it's not hard to say. This is a racetrack. I have made a racetrack with a lap system, a checkpoint system, and as you'll see on our first time around here, lap two of three, a lap time system! We have something keeping track of our time on the track, so you can, you know, compare your times, get your best time, etc, etc. It's pretty cool! But yeah, it's, it's nice. That's our final lap, so we're gonna play our scary little sound, letting everybody know, oh no, somebody's on their final lap, they're about to win. And that is a boost pad right there, in fact, it, uh, uh, it makes you go faster, you know, it's a boost. We'll talk about that in a moment. Maybe. <laughs> But that's our little blip that shows the um, final lap that we have finished, and we're going to display our lap time for the last time. Um, I don't have a declare winner script in there yet. Um, I figured I'd leave that, leave that to whoever. Uh, I'll leave it to your own, own devices. But let's go ahead and get into what's happening in this script. <coughs> oh. So, first things first. Here's our button. And what are we doing with this button? Well, this button is what kicks off the whole shebang. And what the whole shebang is, is uh, once we <clears throat> press the button, we are setting it to having been pressed. Oh, amazing, I know. And once the button has been pressed, we are now looking for everybody who enters a vehicle. So a splash is going to get sent to everybody on the server, and it's going to tell them to find a vehicle. And when they find a vehicle and enter that vehicle, they are added to a new list called Racers Added. And once they are added to the Racers Added list, we are going to take them and teleport them to a different location and that is what this is all doing right here we are just taking the per the people um one at a time which is what this is doing right here we're taking the person one at a time whoever enters and then we are teleporting them onto the racetrack and setting their rotation etc etc just make sure they're facing the right way and yeah and then after that once they're teleported to the track they're declared as an official racer <clears throat> and what we do to our racers is we hold them in place, which is what this little nifty thing is doing. So for however many people you have, this is going to hold all of them in place very quickly at the beginning of the race. Uh, there is uh, a bit of desync involved with this script right here, which I will demonstrate right now. I just want to clarify that what you are about to see is not actually what is happening, that is just what your game thinks is happening. So if I'm up inside this, and I drive forward, oh look, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. No, you're not, because you're actually back here still. It is just your game trying to, you know... It's it, The game is interpolating the fact that you are accelerating, and under those conditions it's like, ah yes, this person should be moving forward. But the server is like, um, no you're not, you're still back here. So once it's done, it brings you back here, and you're good to go. But you are not actually moving forward. That is a script that is effectively holding everybody in place. So, oh my gosh, I always burp when I make these videos. This is like my fourth recording on this one, and I'm still burping. Why? I burped like five times in a row. I'm so mad. <laughs> so, after all that... We're going to start the race, and this is our 3, 2, 1, go script that is happening. So on the condition that the race has not started yet, we are going to check on a custom event. And that custom event is in a different script. We'll get into that one in a moment. But basically, the race hasn't started yet, so we're going to do this custom event. And what happens on this custom event on the condition that the race has not started yet? <clears throat> we're going to spawn some lights. <laughs> And more importantly, we're going to spawn those lights one at a time, uh, which is what this is doing right here. So we're going to execute per object, wait for a second, spawn an object, and then, if it is not our last object, we're going to do this. And we, no, if it's not our last object, we are going to do this. My cat is going ballistic behind me. This recording is brilliant. 
<laughs> we're gonna do this. And if it is our last object, which is the big green glowy light, we're gonna do this. And what happens after we do- wait, no, we're gonna do this because this one is our- Cat, could you stop moving? <laughs> Jesus. We're gonna do this one. This is the green light. This says race started. We- the race has started now. Good job. Now, once we have done all that, on completion, we're going up this way. This is getting too intense. This is getting- let's calm down. Let's calm down for a second. After we've done all that, we're gonna do this, and what this is doing is we're gonna grab all our racers, and we're gonna tell them that the race is started. You're gonna say go. That's it. And then we're gonna delete all the lights. Nice and simple. Now, onto that custom event that I was talking about. Let's go back over here. My cat's still going ballistic behind me. We're gonna go over here, and for every n seconds, we're gonna check if the race has started. If it hasn't started, we're going to... No, check our lists, and our lists are our start positions and our racers. So you saw when we were setting racers, which was over here. I'm a liar. Here, we set our racers right here. Once the amount of racers equals our start positions, then we are going to officially start the race. And what are our start positions, you may ask? Our start positions are down here. So, what happens here is once a person spawns, we're going to spawn a prop with them. And we're getting our size, of, like our list size of players. Um, <clears throat> no, we're not. I'm a liar. People are going to spawn one at a time, so they're going to get a position spawned one at a time. Because um, nothing happens in a game at the exact same moment. Everything's always going to be in a sequence. So, we get the first player, spawn an object. Second player spawns. Get that object. Third player, fourth player. And once we spawn all those objects, we are going to declare those objects in order as a start position. And basically what this is doing is this is li this is literally giving us our start position. So this is referring to these effects right here that I've made invisible. This is position 1, position 2, position 3, and position 4. These all delete on game start, and then after one second, they spawn with a player. And so once people get into a vehicle, they will get teleported to their start positions. Pretty nifty. And unless all those start positions are filled up, like again, if racers is not equal to the amount of start positions, then this will not happen. So if there's somebody like AFK or something or not, somebody's in your lobby just not doing anything, then unfortunately the race will not start. There are different fail-safes that we can do for that, like, because we have this trigger custom event right here. <clears throat> this guy. We could make another thing right here like we could do we get yeah because we can do multiple triggers so we could do something like this where we go um events custom on object interacted stop being shy so we could literally do this and then we could spawn a button and then we'd link that button right here so if you have somebody that is not in the race is not actively participating or somebody's just afk not playing we can just make a button and then attach it to that or even easier we can make it so that my brain stopped we can make it so that once um once you're up here since none of this happens unless you have started the initiation of that race we can do this trigger or on player mark start the race it's simple so that's a, that's a nice little fail-safe that you can implement um, if not everybody on the server is participating in the race. You can start it anyway. But let's go ahead and move on to the next and probably the part that you're actually here for. Our lap system, our checkpoint system, and our lap time system. Firstly, our laps. Once somebody goes through the, uh, the start line, <clears throat> we're going to check how many checkpoints they have. If they have three... We're going to give them a lap. Now, as for our checkpoints, we're doing that over here. If somebody goes through the first checkpoint, if their checkpoints equal zero, give them one. If they equal one, give them two. If they equal two, give them three. And what that is doing is making sure that you are hitting every single one. So from zero to one, one to two, two to three, and then we reset our lap count once we go back through here. And the lap count reset is happening up here. 
No, because we're not resetting the laps. We're adding a lap each time we go through. That's what this is right here. We're taking the player's current laps, then just adding one to it so that their laps actually go up additively. Uh, what we are resetting is the checkpoint system. So every time a player goes through the checkpoints, they are given, um, or every time, yeah. <laughs> every time, yeah. Don't you get it? Don't you get what I just said? It's per perfect, perfect. So we reset their checkpoints and their lap time every time they leave the start line to make sure that this happens after all of this. Um, what's next on the list? Yeah, those are our checkpoints. Let's go to laps. So, if we are on the final lap, as in you have collected three laps, we are going to push the splash that you are on the final lap, which is up here. And then once you go beyond that, we are at the finish, which means the, la the race is done. Uh, right after this is where you'd put like your um, your condition for ending the match or something. If you so desired, giving points to the first person to pass through, blah, blah, blah. Because uh, once this object passes through, once this object passes through, you could do something like on the condition that they have all three laps. Or if they are beyond the third lap. You could grab this object again for right here and just declare them as the winner. You know, give them the points. Say that they're the one who win won the game. Uh, and what this is right here, this is our lap system. This is where we grab their lap once they go through the area and we display what their lap is, which is one of three, two of three, three of three, and that's what this variable is right here, their lap variable. Now, for the lap time, that's happening way up here, and it's actually really quite simple. So we are just, every 10 seconds, we're adding a tenth of a second to everybody's lap time. And everybody meaning all the racers. And then we are setting that number variable to this little bit of math here. Then we're going to come down here and do a little bit more math. Once they enter the area, we are going to show them their time. And what we are doing to show them their time is we're taking it, multiplying it by 10, then dividing it by 10, just so we can get these nifty little nodes right here. We're going to make the whole number our seconds, and then the remainder is going to be our tenths of a second. And with that, you have a fully functional lap, lap time, and checkpoint system. Pretty neat. So, the script showcase is done. This is the part of the video where I just ramble, and if you like me for whatever reason, you will stick around and, uh, I don't know, listen to me blabber. This was hard. For me, specifically. This might be really easy for other people, but I struggle with variables quite a bit. And I struggle... I realized that I actually struggle a lot with multiple branches. Uh, I was, like, frying my brain making this racetrack. Like, I was literally sitting here staring at it and being like, On the condition that you have three laps! We're... We go this way. No, no. This way. Wait. Why isn't working? <laughs> it's just a solid hour of me doing that. But beyond that, just befuddlery, I don't know. The Forge was really determined to not let me make any of this happen. I was trying to make this on my original map, Milestrife's Playground, but it kept crashing. I would be working on the map and I just keep getting disconnects. That's why I made the, the freaking meme. Uh, the connection loss meme because I would work on the script do several things in the script save it I'd start the run to test it and then I get the connection lost thing and it was at this moment in my life that I realized connection lost doesn't mean that the forge server went down it means you broke your map <laughs> so when you go to try and load it it'd be like attention there was an issue with this dedicated server like what do you mean there's no issue with the dedicated server, your map's broken. So tell me my map's broken. But yeah, so I'd have to go and check each save that I've done, because while I'm scripting, I'll save intermittently so that I don't lose the script. I'd have to go through the, the versions and find out which is the most recent version that works. And that'd often be like six or seven different versions that I have to launch up just to see that they don't connect. And then I finally launch up the one that does connect, see how much progress didn't save, work on it a little bit more, and <laughs> break again. It is a pain. It is horrible. But so what I ended up doing is I just grabbed the whole map, prefabbed what I had, brought it to a new map, 
and it, now we are working. I don't know if my map is reaching just a threshold on Miles Drive's playground, like there's too many scripts going on there. Uh, but yeah, I have to bring my racing scripts to a new map. So this is going to be a new series. I'll call it something like Miles Drive's Racing Scripts. We're going to cover a good bit of stuff here. First is the racetrack, which is nice and done, which is probably the hardest part. <laughs> For me, at least. Next, we're going to go over boosts and slipstreaming and jump pads and giving yourself a boost, like when you mark or something, making your vehicle go faster. Uh, then after that, we're probably going to do something like power-ups. I'm going to make a video on how to... Um, you know, make a power up, make it so once you drive through it, you give yourself a, a boost or you give yourself a fusion coil that you can launch from the top of the vehicle. Or you give yourself, uh, you give the person on the back weapons of the various different kinds. You just, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff we can do with it. Uh, some people might not be able to conceptualize it, but trust me, there's a lot of stuff we can do for like power ups and I'm very eager to start testing and get all that done.